Register server, how SIP registration works. By the end of this episode, you'll be able to describe the SIP registration process, describe how the records are stored in the user location table, describe how the expiration time is negotiated, deregister a user, understand the authentication process for registration, and we'll have a demonstration of all these features. Uh, so this is a registration request. So uh, the phone sends a message, the register message, to the specific uh, register server, and it ac is actually registering this address. Okay. So this is the address of record, the AOR, right? The address of record. And in the contact, we have the exact location of the user. So we, here we have the contact, SIP colon 1894 149 and the port. And also the X bars. Uh, when the phone registers, this registration is stored in a user location table right here. So in the server, you can have one contact or multiple contacts performed. So you can actually register more than one phone to your SIP server. Then the server will send a 200 OK back saying, hey, this, the registration is OK. Uh, registration authentication sequence. So for an authenticated registrations, the phone will send the register. Uh, 401 unauthorized will come from the SIP proxy. And now the client will send a register now with an authorized header and then 200 OK. So there are two interesting concepts here. The first one is back. We can have a registration without authentication. This is an important concept, and many people mislead this part of SIP. Uh, when you register a phone, you are not logging in the phone. You are just informing the contact. So the registration is a user location feature, not a security feature. The registration can be authenticated, but also all the invites will be authenticated too, right? So uh, SIP is a transaction protocol. All transactions are, all or most of the transactions are authenticated. Uh, most initial transactions are authenticated and usually sequential transactions are not authenticated. So invite will be usually authenticated, but buy uh, will be more often not authenticated because you have other mechanisms, other mechanisms to, to guarantee the security. So coming back. This is the registration authentication sequence. So this authentication is just for the register. You, will, you won't be able to register without a username and password. Uh, going back here, you send a register. In the 401 unauthorized, this is what we call the challenge. And it's very similar to what happens on HTTP, on a digest authentication on HTTP. You receive a nonce. Nonce is, is a bunch of numbers. Uh, it's uh, nonce means number once. It's a it's it's a number uh, that will be part of the digest authentication. Now the register sends this this registration now with the authorized header, right? And in this authorized header, we have the digest that was built using the nonce, the username, the password, the URI, and many other many other features, part of the RFC. 2617, uh, the same one used for HTTP. And now the SIP proxy, yeah, we receive this registration and if everything is fine, it will send back a 200 OK. If it's not OK, it will send back a, four, a new 401 unauthorized. So this is quite normal. Whenever you send a registration to a server that is authenticating register requests, they will send back 401 unauthorized. This is normal. It's up to the client to send the new register with the authorized header. So in some cases, we say, oh, it's not working. It's not authorizing. I'm receiving a 401 and authorizing. The client's not sending nothing back. The problem is on the client. It's up to the client to send this register with the authorized header. Record expiration. So in a registration, the client requests a specific expiration time here in the expires header. In this case, the client is requesting 3,600 seconds of uh, 
of expiration time. The server now decides the agreed expiration time. So the server in the 200K in the contact is informing the client that the expiration time will be, it won't be 3600, but 120. So in 120 seconds, the client should send another register. And usually the client will send in the midlife of the, of the registration, a new, a new registration. Typical SIP proxy configuration. So the server controls the expiration time using the minimum expires, the minimum expiration time allowed by the SIP proxy, the maximum expires, the maximum expiration allowed by the SIP proxy, and the full expires, the expiration time set if nothing was suggested by the client. Uh, in this case, if we set the maximum expires to 120, it would produce the results seen in the in the last slide. It's very, there's an, a very important concept here. Uh, one thing that happens a lot is whenever you have a problem with registrations, most people decreases the expiration time. And this is an error because when you decrease the expiration time, the client will send more registration requests. And in many cases, this will cause more load on the server and more problems. So take care. If you have a problem with the expiration time, analyze using a, a protocol analyzer or ngrep or SNGrep, many of the tools that we are going to explain uh, you on this, on this course. But do not uh, decrease too much the expiration time. If you put an expiration time of uh, 5 seconds or 10 seconds, it will burden the server with many registrations. This won't do any good to your system. Registration details. One address of record can have more than one contact. What this means? This means that you can have a phone registered on your house and another phone registered on your office in the same account. And if you receive a call, both phones will ring in the same, uh, with the same account. Uh, there is no standard for registration refresh. Some vendors send a new request and registrations midlife. So the normal for registration is Let's suppose you have an expiration of 120 seconds. In 60 seconds, the phone will send a new register request. So if you have uh, 2,000 phones with 120 seconds of expiration times, uh, you have 1,000 uh, requests each 60 seconds. Reducing the registration time forces the client to send registrations more frequently, and this uh, can cause problems. Uh, this is a frequent mistake when you have a problem with registration. So I'm losing registrations. OK, let's decrease the registration time to make sure that we have the registrations. Usually this causes more problems because you generate more traffic to the server. And if the server is overloaded, it will cause even more problems. Cancel registration. A phone to cancel registration can cancel registration just sending a contact header within, with an expiration time of zero. OK, next. Adjusting the clock time. So this is something we have on the RFC 3261. Uh, the RFC provides a mechanism to update the user agent clock. So if a date header is present, the clock will be updated. So if you if you see this header on the on the SIP request on the register request, it can update the, the phone's clock. Just a just a curiosity. Demonstration. So. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to put some phone, a proxy server, and let's demonstrate registration, deregistrations, and some of the, the features you have seen on the, on, the, on the presentation now. 